Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform a USB BIOS flashback on this motherboard here. So, this is the MSI B850 Tomahawk Wi Fi, not to be confused with the B850 Tomahawk Max Wi Fi or any other versions which may be out there, which is why we make these videos because manufacturers tend to have very subtle differences between model numbers, names, etc. So getting the right BIOS for your motherboard is paramount. And for that reason, there will be links in the video description directly to the MSI website, so you can pick up the correct BIOS for this board. And again, just to reiterate, if you have the max version of this board, this video is not for you. This is purely for the B850 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, which is a new reversion of that particular board. So anyway, things you're gonna need for this particular process now, you're gonna need obviously the motherboard itself, which we've got here on the table. You'll also need a power supply for the computer, which I guess if you're building anyway, you should have one of those. And to connect that up to your motherboard to give it power, you only need two connections if you're doing it as a bare board, which we'll talk about a little bit as we go on. So you'll need the CPU 8-pin connector. Now that can be plugged into the motherboard in either of the two top connections. Doesn't make a difference which one it is, but it has to be connected to one of them. And also you need the main 24-pin power which goes into the motherboard on the side. Also, you'll need a USB drive capable of holding the BIOS file and also when it's unzipped. So for this instance, we've got a 32 gigabyte drive. The reason why we tend to use these is because 32 gig drives can be formatted FAT32 very easily within Windows, so 32 gigabytes or less. If you're going over 32 gigabytes and you've got a larger USB stick, you will have to follow our video to actually create a smaller FAT32 partition on the drive. You cannot use NTFS or XFAT. Also, for those of you that may be having problems, which is why you're looking at this video, also make sure that your USB stick is formatted in the MBR format, not GPT. If you need more help with that, again, we've done a video to show you how to clean a drive and prepare it for a USB flashback. We will show some of that in the video, but not the actual cleaning part or actually converting it from GPT to MBR. That is in a separate video. Also, probably goes without saying that you will need access to another computer, ideally a Windows computer, to actually download the BIOS from the MSI website, extract it within Windows, and then rename the file and put it onto the flash drive. Other questions that we quite often get asked is, can I do this on a fully built system? Yes, you can, that isn't a problem at all. The only thing is, I would say, if you wanna do the BIOS flash, do it on a bare board, because that way it will eliminate any other things in the system, preventing the system from actually taking the flash. If you're getting to a point where you've put your processor in and it just comes up with the CPU light and memory light, and it's basically just not doing anything, you can't get any further than you're thinking, right, it probably needs a BIOS flash. Potentially, it could be anything else on the system. It could be the RAMs in the wrong slots. It could be a short circuit under the board. It could be many things, even something as simple as the reset switch on your case actually being broken or shorted, so it keeps it in reset. There's many things that can go wrong on the computer. So to rule out those, we generally tend to do it on a bare board when we get the board straight away from the factory. So there we go. There is the intro and some uh, basic troubleshooting tips. Now I think we're ready to go over to the computer and get the BIOS and prepare our drive and do all of that stuff. So we're on the MSI website. Again, links for this will be in the video description. Do make sure, I can't stress this enough, make sure it is the right board, not the Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi or any other variants. Make sure you have the specific one that you have and do a, like a visual check, make sure the board looks the same, same part numbers, etc., etc. So when you've confirmed that, you can head over to the support tab and generally it will go to drivers and downloads and in the drivers and downloads section, it normally defaults to the BIOS tab here. If yours doesn't, then you can click on this to get that up. Now, because this board is actually so new, there's only been one BIOS released since the initial first one. So the initial one would have been BIOS version one. We are now on version 1A1, which almost looks like a beta BIOS, but it does say that it's a new BIOS release, which was released on the 23rd of October. It is currently the 20th of November, so no upper updates as of yet. But depending on when you're watching this, you may find there's lots of other ones available. Just generally go for the newest one you possibly can. So what we're going to do, click on download and choose somewhere to download the BIOS file to. So we're just going to choose the desktop because that's nice and easy. And it will be a compressed or zipped folder. So we will need to extract that after. So we'll click on save. And that is done. 
So now we can minimize this window. We no longer need this open. So we can find our download, which is here in a zipped format. So we're going to right click on it and choose extract all. Then it's going to ask you where you want the folder to be extracted. So we'll just do it to the same location. You can choose a different one should you want to. And then we've got the actual BAS file inside of this file folder. And as you'll see, this is now a 64 megabyte folder or BIOS, which uh, is unusual. Most BIOSes were 16 or 32 megabytes, but now MSI have increased the size. So that I think is pointing somewhere towards having more support as the future comes for more AM5 processors, or they're just more going on in the graphical interface, which it certainly seems to be on this particular board. But anyway, just to bear that in mind, it is a slightly larger file. Now what we need to do is to actually rename this file so that it's in a format that the motherboard can actually understand what it is. In this particular way, it hasn't got a clue what to do with it, so it just won't flash the boss. So we need to rename this. Now, if you cannot see the file extension on the end, you may need to go to view. And if we go to show and then choose file name extensions, just make sure that is turned on. Because if you have that turned off, you may not be able to see it depending on your version of Windows. Normally it's for known file types, but uh, if you're having problems, just do that. So we need to rename it. So if we highlight the file, then press again, delete everything which is there. And we're just gonna call this msi.rom, R-O-M, and then press enter. We'll come up with a message saying, uh, if you change the file name extension, it may not become usable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes, we are. And there we go. So that is our file rename. So that's gonna be ready for the next part of the process. Next thing to do is to get our USB drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into the computer. When you plug your drive in, it may automatically come up. Uh, some newer versions of Windows don't seem to these days. So you have to go into File Explorer and find your USB drive. Now at the moment, we'll have a look inside. There is a BAS file in there. So we might as well format the drive, which will give you a, a good idea of how to do it yourselves. So right click on the drive, choose format, and you can pretty much leave all of this as it is, although do make sure that the file system is set to FAT32 and not XFAT. And if there is anything in the volume label, I would recommend you remove it and also make sure that quick format is enabled. So when you're happy, click on start. You will get a final warning saying, warning, this will erase all the data on the drive. So if there's anything on the drive that you wanna keep, now is the time to transfer it across onto another storage medium. But when you're happy, click on OK. And there we go, format is complete. So the drive is now been formatted, so that's all ready. So now what we can do is go back down to our folder down here and go in to find our MSI ROM. Right click on it and you can choose either cut or copy. Or if you want to, you can do send to depending on what options you have on your system. Or if you want to, you can just drag and drop it into the USB drive. I'm actually gonna choose the copy function. Then we're gonna to go to the USB drive, which is empty, right click and choose paste. Again, whatever method you choose is entirely fine. And there we go. So now our USB drive is ready. That's great. So we can close all of these windows down. We don't need that anymore. And now we can remove the USB drive from the computer. And next we can go over to our little workbench setup and flash the BIOS. So now we're ready for the next part of the process. So you ideally want something to rest the motherboard on. I'm gonna use the box. That seems as uh, a good a thing as any. And also what you could do is familiarize yourself with the ports on the back of the motherboard, which you'll need for flashing the BAS. So the actual BAS flashback USB drive goes into this port here. You, if you look closely, you'll see there is a rectangle around the outside and it says USB BIOS or BIOS. So that just plugs into there. And for flashing the bars, the flashback button, there's two buttons on the board here. One of which is a reset CMOS, which is the kind of the top one. And the one which is a little bit more recessed of the two, if you're doing it by touch, the more recessed one is the one you press and hold for a couple of seconds to get the bars flash in. They deliberately make it a little bit smaller and a bit more difficult to press purely because they don't want you to do it by mistake. So yeah, that is a, a way to work out which one is which if you don't really have a great deal of access to it and you're doing it kind of blind. That is pretty much it for the USB side of it. Obviously for the power supply, we've got our power supply, we've got that plugged into the mains, but in the off position. So next we can connect up our power connectors. So we've got our CPU or EPS connection 
that goes into the connectors onto the top of the motherboard. So again, either one of them is absolutely fine, whichever one you can get to. And the next one is the main 24 pin power, which goes into the connector on the outside edge of the board. Just push it in and make sure it kind of clicks into place and is firmly attached. So that is it, we are pretty much kind of ready. Now with this, I'm not entirely sure where the BOSS flashback LED is. I'm guessing it's gonna be somewhere behind this button or at the top here. We'll see how that is when it starts. So we'll turn on the power supply to begin with. So the power supply is turned on. Now when we do start the process, you may find your power supply, the fan will start spinning. Some will, some won't, depending on the type of power supply. Some are designed so that if there's a minimal load on the system, such as just the motherboard, then it won't spin because it's not drawing enough power. So don't be too concerned if your power supply doesn't start spinning. Again, some will, some won't. So power supply is on, we're ready to go. All we need to do now is to get the BOSS flashback button, press and hold it for about three seconds, and you should find that the BOSS LED should start flashing. So let's start that first of all. And we've got some LEDs in the back there. The power supply has switched on. And there is a very bright white LED on the back. And yes, that took a little while, but it is actually flashing. So if I turn that around, you can just about see, just tuck down in here. There we go. It flashed slowly a couple of times. Now it's flashing faster. I'm not sure if that is actually visible from the outer edge. And it doesn't appear to be. So unfortunately, yeah, you are gonna have to kind of wing it a little bit and just keep an eye on the flashing going on behind the heat sink, which uh, may not be entirely obvious to some people, but this is pretty much it. So just let it do its thing. Now, if you've got to this point and it's just flashed a couple of times and then stopped, or it's gone to a solid white LED, what that generally means is either the system cannot read the USB drive, not all USB drives are created equally, there are some compatibility issues with some drives sometimes, and potentially if you've used a larger drive and created a smaller FAT32 partition on that drive, it doesn't always work perfectly. So I would always recommend if you can, grab a 32 gigabyte drive or smaller, as long as it can hold a 64 megabyte file, you'll be absolutely fine. So even some of the really old USB drives, sometimes those are actually preferable. But again, just uh, keep an eye on for that. If you're still getting problems and with all the kind of troubleshooting and the advice we've given in this video, if you're still experiencing issues, then please do feel free to join us on our Discord. There is a BOSS flashback channel. So if you're getting problems, you're more than welcome to put the information in there and we can try and help you as best we can. Generally, Kind of nine times out of 10, it turns out to be badly formatted files, the wrong file, or just there's other bits on the motherboard which are conflicting. In some instances, we have found where if a case has got maybe some sort of USB built-in drive or card readers, that sort of thing, maybe you've got a printer of the card reader, maybe you've got a USB drive, maybe even some SATA drives can potentially prevent the process from happening. So that is again why we normally suggest to try and do this on a completely bare board. That way you're ruling out any other things kind of stopping or preventing the process from happening. Anyway, with all that said, I'm gonna let this carry on flash in and uh, we'll come back when it's done. And just to give you a better shot there, there's the board led down. You can just about make out the diagnostic D LEDs in the top corner there. And they are currently on CPU and also DRAM because well, there's no CPU and there's no DRAM. So that is like a default light, as you can see. The light there is now flashing a little bit quicker. So yeah, just be patient and wait for that to finish. And uh, yeah, we'll come back when it's done. Also, I should have mentioned that the BOSS process should take somewhere between five to six minutes approximately, uh, maybe slightly longer, maybe slightly less. If yours is flashing for considerably longer than that, then it's having problems reading the drive as we mentioned a little bit earlier. So yeah, just uh, do make sure that you've got the right file it's been correctly extracted and has the correct file name extensions. And I've just put the uh, the camera in a slightly different position. You can just about see the BOSS flashing LED reflecting on the M.2 shield there. So yeah, even if you cannot see it from the back, you should be absolutely fine. It is a, quite a bright LED and it's bright white as well. So it does stand out. So yeah, I was a little bit concerned about that 
not being visible, but it looks like it's going to be uh, yeah, absolutely fine. And actually thinking about it, it probably will take longer to flash because previously we had 32 megabyte files. So if it's a 64 megabyte file, in theory, it should take twice as long. So it may take for up to 10 to 12 minutes, I guess. When I come to looking back at the footage, I will put a marker at the bottom of the screen just to verify that one way or the other. Or I'll mention it in the outro. And there we go. Finally, the power supply has clicked off. The LED has now extinguished. So I'll just take the uh, camera around a bit. So you can see yeah, the LED has now gone out. You just see the power supply has stopped spinning. So that is basically now done. You'll notice that the LEDs are still on, obviously, because we haven't got a CPU or RAM installed, so error lights will still occur. So that is kind of pretty much it from that point of view. So now you can just remove the USB stick because it's finished with that. It's taken actually a lot longer time to flash than the previous 32 meg bosses. So uh, turn off the power supply and that's clicked off. LEDs have gone out, so that is it. The board has done. So now if you want to, you can disconnect it then put it back into your PC case or whatever you want to do, or just continue on with your build. Those choices are obviously going to be entirely down to you and your particular setup. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much it. How to flash the boss on this new MSI 64 meg system. So there we go. That is the boss flash done on the new MSI Tomahawk B850 Wi-Fi with its new 64 megabyte flash, which takes even longer. Who'd have thought they could make it even more terrifying than it was anyway? Anyway, it's all done and dusted. It did take a little bit longer. So yeah, with that bigger file size, it is taking a little bit longer to flash. I think it's closer to 11, maybe 10, 11 minutes. So yeah, if yours is flashing on past the five or six minute mark, that is to be expected. I, uh, yeah, I didn't really take that into consideration when I thought about it earlier, but anyway, there you go. If you've got any problems or your board's still getting issues, then please feel free to reach out to us in the Discord, as we mentioned earlier. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and don't forget the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.